Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And for the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And for the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others what you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. But if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great. You will be children of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. The measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Know where we're going, and then we want to know what the road is. 
Jesus says, you know the way that leads where I'm going. And St. Thomas, sort of like Alice, says, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. I'm the reality of the Father. I'm the experience of the Father. I'm everything. Follow me. So most parishes really have no clear sense of where they're going. Oh, they think they do. We always do. And we don't have any ideas sometimes even how to get there. And that describes it very well. We have a general sense of where we are, and hopefully we're all going to heaven. But sometimes we have a very skewed sense of what that means and how we'll get there. Much is to be done before that. One of my other extra jobs is uh, the dean of this deanery. That's those little VF initials after my name, the Vicar Foray. It's a sort of supervisory position that takes care of about a quarter of the diocese going through Alexandria down to just above Uniontown. And one of my jobs is, is to visit those parishes occasionally, uh, to meet with the pastor, and then to meet with the pastoral and financial councils separately, and to find out from them really what's going on. Sometimes to get, to get rid of the pastor so they might tell you some semblance of the truth. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. What distressed me sometimes is finding out how complacent the people were and what was not going on in their parish. One particular that sticks in my mind was, I said, well, okay, well, what are, what are you doing here in the parish to you know, make the parish stronger? Well, we worked with Father last year to get the parking lots paved. You can imagine I wanted to, like, scream. We are perfectly content with that. And when I challenged them about trying to make the parish better and to do what a pastoral council particularly was supposed to do, I sensed hostility. They were angry with me for challenging them. And I think somehow they thought I was threatening to close them, which part is not in my power at all. But today they have no resident pastor like they did then, so they didn't listen. It had nothing to do with that meeting and never reported that. But sometimes we think we know where we're going, and sometimes we know what our job is. They obviously had no clue what their idea was. And so we might try to make some suggestions, but like, all the shields went up, all the doors were closed, and obviously nothing happened then, and maybe hopefully things might happen now under the new administration. So parish life sometimes is just sort of wandering aimlessly from activity to activity, from doctoral class to doctoral class, uh, from parasocial to parasocial, from Bible study to Bible study without any sense of direction. All I know, of course, is all men to help us to know more about Jesus and God. But the problem is, in our church, first of all, most people never did those things. And even when they're, they're all done, people know more about God, but still don't know God. They have no experiential relationship with Him. And He's still very much a mystery. Well, He's still a mystery. But not meant to be so much a mystery as sometimes we need ourselves to believe. A compelling vision that is rooted in the will of God and supported by good pastoral strategy, saturated with prayer, that's why we say the Alpha prayer all the time, is more likely to yield amazing fruit. Every parish needs this sort of vision tailored to its own particular set of circumstances. Alpha and divine renovation do not lay out a specific plan. Here's what you do. Neither by itself is a complete pastoral strategy, and even together they're not a pastoral strategy. They are an, an anchor, a format, in which is to hang your particular local ideas and what is going to build up, what's going to build up your own parish community. At Holy Family, we use Alpha to create a culture of imitation and to raise up Catholic disciples who become passionate about Jesus and the mission He has given us. And so then we move into Alpha, which of course we've spoken a great deal about that. And that's an essential tool within our uh, spiritual uh, arsenal, the means in which we invite people into a relationship with Jesus. I know that the phrase is strange to us, and that's, I think, our big downfall, is we never thought about that. Oh, if you turn on the fundamental stations or Protestant stations this morning on TV, you'd hear a great deal about that, but we'd have to say, admittedly, they've got something there. That's why all these new churches spring up all over the place. Because they give people a relationship with Jesus, an experience inside them, then they don't care what church they belong to. They don't care about the sacraments. They don't care about the Mass. All they can care about is that, and that's skewed, but we have to understand kind of where they're coming from. 
And it's going to help them grow in faith. In other words, we make them disciples and then form them as disciples. You might wonder why do we want to use the Mass itself as a primary means of helping people encounter Christ. The people who are in the, not in a relationship with Jesus or who are not Catholic tend to feel like outsiders when they join us at Mass. All that standing, kneeling, sitting, it gets kind of confusing to people. We found that after we bring people to a relationship with Jesus, then they want to come to Mass. In addition, you know, when you invite people, but sign out front, all are welcome. The people come into Mass and we say, okay, now we're glad you're here, but you can't go to communion. That's the way it is, and there are reasons for that. But sometimes it takes, in um, a particular sense, uh, the opportunity to explain to them that communion is something that we call people into communion, into oneness with us, and now they can receive communion. Right? That's another one. It doesn't seem very hospitable, and so, in particular, it's not really the, the means to which to bring people essentially into a fundamental relationship with Jesus. We're trying to help people discover their mission in life. Then we'll send them as disciples reaching out to friends and family where they work and where they play. Long range, when the topic of faith comes up, people are equipped to speak with confidence about who God is to them and how He's changed them. When people fall in love with Jesus, they come back to the church. Then they seek the sacraments. Alpha is not the whole enchilada. It's only part of the divine renovation meal. And the people have completed Alpha, we invite them to become part of the Alpha team, which is the next thing there. There we continue to form them so they can help one another experience the beauty of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit through the Alpha process. After people experience formation through their time with the Alpha team, we invite them to join a Connect group, which is the next one. This will be a group of about 20 or so people who form a group, a small group community, so that they gather regularly for a meal, a practical talk, fellowship, and prayer to help deepen their relationship with Jesus. There are parishioners, other people who come to join them. I can encourage you to accompany one another after they have come through Alpha. Most parishes, of course, are much too large to allow the pastor to give one-on-one -on -one support and counseling to every individual parishioner. The beauty of connect groups is that within them, people come to know and to care for one another. Some parishioners will have the gift of pastoring, not the canonical office, but uh, being able to help people in their, help their fellow parishioners grow in the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, which they can foster growth in one another. Then comes ministry. We want everyone in the church to use their gifts and serve in ministry. Everybody. Not because we want something from them, but because we want something for them. As parishioners discover their gifts and put them in service to the Lord and His church, they unlock a sense of their own purpose, then they can participate more fully in Christ's mission. We're hinting, but maybe not saying it as clearly as we should. We are moving in our faith to the supernatural element of our faith, which has to do with the closeness with Jesus that is clearly divine. We're calling our faith to reach out and to touch the face of God, to experience that divine reality within us. Remember, the Catechism said God made us to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him, and so most people haven't gotten past the first one, to know Him. So God expects us to love Him. He has business getting us to know Him. We just have to make some of those steps. Along with our connect groups, then next we have discipleship groups. They're designed to help Christians grow in their understanding of the richness of our Catholic faith. Discipleship groups help people in the foundational dis disciplines of discipleship, prayer, reading, scripture, learning to discern the will of God, applying the principles of the moral life to their own situations, and so on. The wells of our church are deep. A lot to know in the Catholic Church. Most times the Holy Spirit the service of most of us were admitted when maybe to sixth grade CCD and maybe even the whole way to twelfth grade Catholic school, but sometimes we find out uh, Catholics really know very little about their faith. The final icon there at the bottom is worship. We think of Mass as the highest form of worship because it is. But Alpha also shows us there are other ways that we can worship together. We can pray together as staff, as task force, 
senior leadership team and our connect groups, our youth ministry, Rosary Society, Point Aim Society, and individual encounters at virtually every meeting or event. Sometimes it's a quick prayer recited before a meeting, sometimes it involves more. And his heart worship is about offering to the Lord the praise and thanksgiving that is due. What does God do with praise and worship? Well, he turns it back to us and blesses us more. It's not like God really needs prayer, or worship, or songs, or anything like that, but he draws us into a relationship with him. By creating a culture of worship, we give everyone a chance to constantly surrender to Jesus. It builds us up, the spirit it makes us stronger. We might examine ourselves and see what our attitude is in the practice when we come to Mass. The obligation to attend Mass on Sunday is not just obviously to attend, to be physically present in the building, but to pray. Say the prayers, to sing the songs, to act like we're really, really here. Not just an obligatory way. Our game plan then illustrates our values, our beliefs, and the importance of the situation of Alpha within the parish's overall plan. As I spoke to other priests at the conference in Halifax, it became more evident what a blessing it really was to them. They were much farther along than we were. There's nothing I taught myself that I did not already know or have attempted to initiate, but what was missing was the whole plan, the whole platform. Thoroughly thought out and brought to fulfillment in the lab of the St. Benedict in Halifax. However, as we do it together here in Holy Family in Latrobe, we will bring it to perfection. Why not? Even now, there are other parishes and our dioceses that are experiencing the same lack of growth and vibrancy as we are, and now are consulting with us, asking us what we are doing and how to do it. What a blessing at the last point in our vision statement that we passed out last Sunday. That we be a city set on the hill for all to see is already coming to fulfillment. Let us make it so, my brothers and sisters.